When it comes to retirement, all we ever hear about is the glory days, laying on a beach, drinking whatever we would like to drink and eating all the food we want with no worries in the world. But is it the truth about retiring? Is retirement nothing but fun, sun and surf and sand and filet mignon and lobster? Or is there actually a lot more to it? And today I want to talk about eight of the ugly truths about retiring. And I don't, it could be early retiring, it could be late retirement, but I'm going to tell you this right now. I have experienced some of these myself once I retired from teaching, and we need to talk about it because anybody out there, anybody, I don't care if you're working now, pay attention to this video because you're going to see exactly what I am talking about. Retirement can absolutely be one of the worst times in your life if you don't plan accordingly. And I'm not just talking about money. Oh, I gotta have millions and millions. I'm talking a lot more than this that no one ever talks about. And it's almost like you shouldn't discuss it because you don't work, so you can't have a say. And that's not the truth. And so today we're gonna talk about retirement and those ugly truths. I wanna start first with what I think is the biggest issue that we have when it comes to retirement. When I retired from teaching and my wife did as well, this is just a couple of years ago, not that long ago, we thought we had the world by, we lassoed it in, we could do whatever we wanted. But I gotta tell you, the bills start to flow in. And you might be saying, what are you talking about? Well, <clears throat> I had expenses that I never had when I was a teacher. Number one, the biggest one that just threw me for a loop of how much this cost was my health care. And when you retire, and if you retire 65 or older, you're good. You get Medicare. But what happens if you want to retire at 62? What happens if you want to retire earlier than that? And you want to work for yourself, all right? So I, I'm kind of retired, but then not retired because I actually work more hours now. But it's for myself. I can do whatever I want. I set my own schedule and I continue to do this. But there are people who don't want to ever work another day in their life and they want to retire and I let me open the let me open your eyes to how much it costs to retire and pay your own health care. And so if you don't have a spouse who's working and they don't get health care for the family, this is what you get to look forward to. And I can be for one tell you that this is absolutely true. This every month kills me. And you can see this. The average annual premiums. This is just the premiums. I pay more than this. I pay around $2,200 a month. So I'm paying around twenty six dollars to 27000 a year. Now you might say, well, and think about what I just said. This is for the premiums. This is the, and I'm in a high deductible. That means I think I, I think it's like $10,000 or five or $10,000 in the categories. I don't even know because I try not to think about it. Uh, but it was one of the best policies I could find at the time. And here you go, 22,463 is the average family coverage. If you got kids going to college, they can be covered until what? They're 26. So if you're gonna retire early, you gotta keep that in mind. If you're retiring later, 50 something years old, you and your spouse, you can get a little cheaper. Obviously for a single person, it's 7,900. But that's every, when you look at this, it's every year. So every month for a family coverage, I'm just telling you, think $2,000 for the premium a month, and that's after taxes. So if you actually look at this number, think about this. I have to pay over $2,000 a month. That means with the federal, state, local, and I work for myself. So I have to pay 12 point, what is it? 12 point, uh, see, 12.8, 12 point something, 12.4, 6.2, 6.2, 12.4% for the social security taxes. I have to pay the employer part and my part. Put all that together, I'm looking at close to 50 cents on the dollar in tax money. And so after that, I have to make like, well, close to $50,000 a year just to pay the health insurance. And that's not including any bills I get then. And so if you were gonna retire before you're 65, be warned, it is not cheap for healthcare when it's out of your pocket. I just want you to be aware of that because a lot of people don't realize that. They come out here and they think, oh, retirement, I, just, I won't get sick. Nothing's bad going to happen. I already got three back operations under my belt. My wife's been through three, uh, I should say, stage three cancer. And that was years. And I'm talking 
the bills, I think, came to around a million bucks altogether for that. I know some of the drugs she took uh, were extremely expensive. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm so glad she's alive. But it did break our bank. We spent everything we had on that. And so uh, that is in the middle of our work life. In other words, we weren't we were in our 40s. Not, we lost everything, basically. So what happens if you retire at 63, 64, 65, you get sick, and all of a sudden the bills start piling and you don't have the right insurance? You could lose a lot. So you got to be prepared for that. Make sure you got the right insurance and that you're prepared for anything, anything. That so you don't lose all your money. That's one of the main things. So one of the first things, like I said, one of the ugly truths is your health care is going to cost you unless you're 65 or older. Now, if you're 65 or older, you're going, hey, it doesn't affect me, Mo. I know. You're right. It doesn't. You're okay. But there's going to be other ones. Stock markets don't always give you profits. So you might plan on all this stuff and money and everything and say, oh, I got money invested, Mo. I'm doing great. And I can say to you, well, I get it. But what happens if you retired and say, yeah, I'm going to retire somewhere here we'll say right here you just happen to retire at the end of 2021 in november before the holidays you want to spend time and all of a sudden you have your money out there in the nasdaq you're down 24.11 percent and you're not working putting more money in you're retired now and no one's going to put all their money into just the nasdaq maybe you put in the s p 500 mix of what well when you retire you should have a good amount of bonds bonds are the retiree's friend they give you income every quarter, every month, depending on which ones you're in, treasuries, all these good things. This is the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund, BND. Look at the last, well, we'll go out to the max. When you start to look at this and you're thinking, how good are bonds when you actually start to look at them? Well, if you retired, like I said, back in, just take a look at this, even if you went up here to 2021, think about if you retired here and you put your money in bonds. Look how much they dropped. They're down about 15, 20%, okay? That's in bonds. Bonds don't do that. Look at the max of this. This is all the way back to middle of 2000. Usually, if you have your money in bonds, you have 20% plus you got paid. Look what happens if you retire now. You're, you got paid, but you lost. And so eventually this will bounce back. Bonds are very solid investments. I, I always believe that. We take a look at this and you realize that both bonds and equities got hammered over the last few years. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. There's no guarantee that you're going to be able to just, hey, I'm throwing my money in there. We're good. Now what happens if the bond, because some people are calling for the markets not to recover. Basically, you're going to see little to no gain every year for the next 10 years in the equities market. That's what some people are calling for. And what happens if they're right? We've had times where you can go 10 years and the market's a little changed, but you're spending money. You're not getting those gains. What happens if the bonds don't recover, which I think they will, but what happens if they don't? We're in trouble. And so that's one of the things I always tell people, you can't just guarantee everything. You, you invest the best you can, of course, but there are no guarantees that you're gonna make bank on your investments. So that's an ugly, another ugly truth out there. And the biggest one I always get, and I talk to people about this, is we talk about, you know, they say, I got so much money in the bank. I got a couple hundred thousand in the bank. I'm, I'm not going to live forever anyways. And they're like 60, 65, whatever. Say they're 65, no health care problems. And they go, I'm not going to live forever. And you got to realize at 65 years old, your life's not over. You're just beginning. You're a young chicken. There's lots of time left for you. People think they're going to die within a few years or something. People don't know that once you hit 60, because they'll be like, oh, the average person lives to be 70, like a guy lives to be 71 or 73 or something like that. Yes, from birth. But if you hit 65, it's a whole different ball game. Men at birth uh, in the United States live to be 73.2. And that's what you hear. Oh, I'm only going to live to be 70. I got a couple of years left. Yeah, but what happens if you actually hit 65 years old? Well, then you live to be 82 82, not 73. That's an extra nine years. If you're planning for just eight more years, you should have planned for 17 or longer. And that's the average. And if you're a woman, if you're a woman, check this out. You are expected to live to 85, but if you live to 65, you actually live to 87. So not too much difference, a little over two and a half years. 
And, but the point is, you are gonna live longer than you expect. Now, you can see, man, on average, uh, like I said, they'll live to be about 84 years old in the blue. Uh, well, United States, it's about 81 to 82, about 82. Women uh, in the United States will live to be about 84 to 85, so about two to three years difference. So plan on that as well. No one ever wants to tell you this, that you're actually going to live a lot longer. If you can make it to 65, you already done all the dumb things we do as young guys, jumping off cliffs into the creek, off the railroad bridges, doing riding motorcycles all around, popping wheelies down the road. I remember doing all that crazy stuff. Now that I look back on my life, I'm like, man, how am I alive? But there you go. You know, we do, we do what we do. So the next thing I wanted to bring up to everyone is, uh, <laughs> I should tell you this, you're going to spend a lot more than you believe once you retire. Everybody always tells me, oh, I'm going to cut back. I'm just going to sit back and relax. The truth of the matter is you're not going to. You're going to spend a lot more money because you're going to want to do more things. But on top of that, think about the last two years in the U.S. right now. And think about how much money somebody may have had, $100,000, a million dollars in the bank. And how much was inflation that first year or two years ago? It was around 10%. That million in one year is the equivalent of $900,000 in purchasing power the next year. They can't buy as much as they could the year before. And, and you can say, well, they had it invested, I'm sure. I just showed you the stock market's dropped. Not only do they not have the million, it's probably down to nine hundred dollars to 850000 in the stock market. The inflation ate up an additional 10% off of that. So they got double whammied. And I don't think people realize it. They're down to 800. Just say they have 900,000 in the bank or whatever, the market. And now they have 10% less purchasing power. So it's the equivalent of having 810,000 from the year before all the way up to a million. That million has lost about 20% of its value in one year. That's ugly. And people don't talk about it. And then we could still have that issue coming up if we go into a recession and the markets retest those bottoms. Look out. All right. And so everybody keeps thinking, even if they have a lot of money, oh, it's good. Nah, no, no. The markets aren't guaranteed to go up. All right. The, you know, it's not that set in stone that no matter what happens, we make money. And that's something I always want people to be warned about. Now, let's get into some real talk. And I got to tell you this one, I'm going to tell a story for this one. This is one of the ugly truths of retirement. If you're going to retire early, and people, you know, you're going to talk to people and this and that. There's some things you need to know. And everybody always wants everything to sound exciting. It's like when you go on Instagram. People only, and Facebook and all these other places, people only put pictures of the happy things. They don't put pictures of the sad things. They don't put pictures of the, the truth of every day, the 90-something percent of their life. They take, oh, we have a great moment. Take a picture so I can share it. And everybody thinks, man, this person, they really, they really got life figured out. And it probably isn't further from the truth. They're probably having issues as well. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you retire, you know what you leave behind? You leave behind work. And I know some of you right now say, I don't want to work. I hate work. Can't stand work. I used to hate waking up to go to work. I love being a teacher. It was awesome, man. Go in. The kids are great. They'd bring me apple fritters. Uh, They're called the Big Ugly uh, down there at Dunkin' Donuts. And the kids would, and they changed the name back to Apple Fritter, but they were called Big Uglies at one time. Man, they were good. They were good. They'd bring them in, bring me an orange juice. Man, you, you just got to love. Young people are so considerate. And I always appreciated that. But I got to tell you, my work friends were there. That was awesome. My work friends are there. We're having a good time. We always talk to each other. And it was like my family outside of my family. And I'd go leave one family to go to the other family, which is my work friends, the students, everybody. And it, it is. It's two families. And when I retired from teaching, and that this, this is absolutely true for me. I'm speaking from the heart from this one. My wife as well. We don't have those friends like we did. I would have people I would talk to every day for the last 20 years. And we would talk, shoot the breeze, have fun, go out, everything. And once I left teaching, there are 90-something percent of the people I have never seen again. And to me, that breaks my heart. And they're working. They're busy, they're working, they have that life there, they have that family there, and you're replaced very quickly. And so the mental anguish that goes with leaving a family to never really see them hardly ever, ever, ever at all, maybe a Facebook post here, an Instagram like, but really, 
that interaction, the jokes, uh, the, hey, how's everything going? It's very rare. Maybe you text once in a while. And it's not the same. I don't care. Everybody's going to say, call, do stuff. Well, they're busy. Remember, they're still working. They're still, you know, when they get free time, they want to spend it with their normal family. That was the work family. The normal family's different. And so I do warn people to understand that once you leave, and that's gone, that's tough. And I got to tell you, uh, that that's one of the hardest things because that leads into the next of the ugly truths of retiring. You get bored. I get bored. You got to find something to do. Now, I work all the time on my business. I do. I keep myself busy there. I found myself when I first got done teaching, doing the business, and you're kind of done teaching. So I'm like, wow, I, 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 I'm doing the videos. I'm researching. And as time went on, and I, I wanted to go fishing. I wanted to go do things and because I'm not teaching anymore. I can do whatever I want. Then I found that once you do whatever you want and that's done, well, now you have to do something productive. And I found myself actually working more and wanting to work more, doing the research, doing the videos, talking to the people in the community, and it became my new work family. And that's how I look at this. So I'm kind of lucky, but not everyone is. Not everyone has a YouTube channel to go out there and do their thing and create content and have a community and all that good stuff. And so if you don't, that's going to be something you need to prepare for. And after this, I'm going to tell you a story from someone, this absolute true story. But before I do, I got to make sure I push this in there for those who haven't done it. And this is one of the things I always talk about. Get your free stocks from Moomoo down below for those who are investing some of the retirement money. All you got to do is click the link down below, put $100 in, get five free stocks worth up to $2,000 apiece. Or the Moomoo link or the Weeble link right now. Weeble's giving you up to 12 free shares of stock for putting a dollar in. And that could be worth up to $30,600. Take advantage of that. Then come on over to my community. If you like these videos, you want to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And we got good stuff at our private Discord. The Patreon has thousands of members. Come on over and join it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Link down below. Now, here's the story. I have a teacher. When I was teaching, I was a math teacher, business teacher, finance teacher. I did a lot of different things. But the, the one year, was I think it was my second year of teaching, I ended up becoming a math teacher from the business wing. And I walked over one of the older teachers there. He was retiring. He wasn't 65. He was actually younger than that. And I swear he was in his 50s. And he, he came up and I said, hey, you're retiring. Yeah, I introduced myself and everything. He said, yeah, I always ask people when they're retiring, what are you going to do? He's going to... I'm going to go do some traveling, some other things he wanted to do. I think some hunting trips. And I said, are you excited? He goes, "When you, you you know when you're done teaching because you'll know. And I said, you're just tired of it, just ready to be finished? And he said, yeah, I'm, you know, you'll know. You're just ready to be done. And I listened to that. And I always thought, wow, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. And then I ran into him. All right, Two years later, I ran into him. And this guy, he was... Talk about the, the family life. Talk about all the, the your family, I should say your work family. He had it all. He was very popular, very popular in the school. All the kids loved him. All the teachers admired him. He was very well respected. He it was a great teacher. And uh, I got to tell you, it's, it doesn't take long for people to forget you. I remember just a few year later, years later asking about the kids about, hey, you remember so-and-so? No one knew. None of the kids knew. The name's never been passed down. The new, the older teachers retire, new teachers come in. They don't know. So you're replaced very quickly. And I ran into him and I said, uh, hey, how's retirement? Oh, he's, oh, hey, how you doing, Mo? I, and he looked at me. He wasn't the same excited person. I said, did you go on your trips? He goes, I did. I went on all my trips. And he was just very melancholy, just kind of sad there. I said, what's up, man? I thought you, is something wrong? You know, he's like, no. Nah. I said, well, let me ask you this. I always like to ask people after they had some time and retired. I said, are you glad you retired? And he kind of threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting his answer. Uh, I didn't know what he would say, but I wasn't expecting what he told me. He looked at me. He said, I got to tell you something. He said, I went a whole year and I did everything I wanted to do. And that's because that's the guy and the guy he was. He, he said, I did everything I wanted to do. I said, okay. And he said, this last year, and it was, he goes, I, I, I just sat at the house. There was nothing else to do. And 
I wake up every day. There's nothing to do. I'm bored. I just sit there. I watch TV. And to me, man, I, I could feel it in his words. You could see it in his eyes. That he was not the same man who I talked to when he retired and the admiration from everybody and every, you know, have the world. I have my plans. What happens once you do that? The long term plans isn't what can I do for the next 12 months? That's short term. And he looked at I and I said to him, I said, so are you glad you retired? And he said, if I can go back in time, I would have never retired. And that hit me right there. Think about the same person because I don't ever talk to him. The, and I talked to him a lot, but I mean the two times when he retired right that day. And then the second, the next time I talked to him was when he told me that. So there was nothing in the middle. I had two, the beginning of the story and the end of the story. And his story was, if I can go back in time, I would have never retired because he lost in my mind. He lost from what he told me that day, everything you live for, you know, people needing you, having stuff to do, and your your work family, all that socialization, it was gone. And that's tough. And so I think that's one of the biggest ones, the ugly truths about retirement that people just don't know. It is not going to be as easy as, well, I don't have to do it. I'll just sit on the couch. Well, then you're just going to, it's going to get ugly. So I always tell people a couple things to do. You can't just sit around. Make sure you volunteer somewhere. Make sure you have some things you're passionate about that you can do. Maybe it's volunteering the SPCA, down at the homeless shelter, volunteer cleaning up, going to the community garden, something. All right? Make sure you have activities to do. Maybe you love playing bingo. Maybe you love going fishing and hunting. Make sure you have something you can do all the time to keep you busy. And you have a network, a social network outside. Once you retire that you know people you can call and do stuff with. And of course uh exercise exercise try to live get out there and walk for a half hour hour a day before you do anything and that way at least you're physically healthy in terms of getting the proper exercise try to eat right and of course that's a lot of the things because if you don't do that uh you're gonna have some issues so the other ugly truth is you're gonna have an identity crisis and this goes into the mental health part of retirement i know what everybody's thinking that it's just going to be great. I'm going to retire and everything's going to be great. I'm going to be happier. I'm going to be more fulfilled. And for a lot of people, that's not the truth. You actually lose your identity. My wife and I were teachers. We are well known in the community. We volunteered. We went to the sporting events. We did everything. And now we don't see anybody. We work at our business. We go to functions that revolve around the business. And so if we didn't have this business and we retired, say we hit the millions of dollars in the lottery and we were able to retire, I can tell you right now, I would have a major identity crisis if I didn't work and I just sat around the house. I would try to exercise and stuff, but boy, I, I would, it would be difficult. And I think that's one of the ugly truths about retirement a lot of people out there have. And let me know in the comments, anything I'm talking about today, if you experience it, you know people who experience it, I know personal family members uh, who experience some of these issues. They don't get a lot of exercise. Uh, phys physical ailments can stop them. It can be ugly. It can be ugly. And the last thing leads into this. What happens if you start to have those? What happens if you have long-term care issues? Do you have long-term care insurance? All right, I'm not selling anything to you. I'm just letting you know, guys. This is expensive. Uh, here it is. The average cost of a nursing home is $9,000 per month, 110,000 roughly per year. My friends, this is no joke. Do you have the money to pay for that at the end? If not, you're gonna be in a place that may not be top quality compared to private nursing homes where you can pay for the best care. And so that my friends is one of the big ones. Do you have what it takes to take care of yourself down the road? Yes or no. And, and most people think, oh, I'm just going to die in my sleep. I don't have to worry about it. I'm fine. The truth is 70% of people over the age of 65 in this country will need long-term care insurance. Only 30% do. Or only 30% can avoid it. You think you're going to be one of the 30%? 
I don't want to roll the dice and risk my family's financial freedom down the road, their safety and everything else when it comes to the finances because I'm being stubborn. And that's another ugly truth. It's going to be a lot more expensive than we all think when we retire. Let's enjoy it. I'm not here to bring down the rain clouds. There are a lot of positives I always hear about retirement. But in this video, I wanted to just sprinkle a little truth on there about the ugly side of retiring that no one wants to talk about. And I think it needs to be brought to light. Financial education isn't about just our work life. There's also a part of our retirement life that needs to be discussed. Now, if you haven't done it, come on over and join me at the Patreon. We have a private Discord. We talk over there. Any kind of discussion you'd like to have, I'd love to have your support here on the channel. And get your free stocks from Weeble and Moomoo down below. It's good stuff. We only have to do a, a dollar deposit for Weeble and a $100 deposit for Moomoo. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.